Hello there guys, welcome back. Daniel Childs here for my team selector ahead of tomorrow night's game against Nottingham Forest in the Premier League. We're into the final season or at least the final three games of this long, dramatic, inconsistent, chaotic season following Chelsea Football Club once again. I think the great thing is that we walk into this final week feeling a lot more optimistic or just interested compared to last year where we just could not wait until that season was over. And I think it's uh, it's quite wild that in a week's time or so, you know, we could be on the brink of qualifying for, for Europe and the tone and kind of the way we're going to look at this season in history might be radically different, which is just a little bit wild given the way it's gone. So I'm going to be giving you my preview. We're going to go through some of the drama or chaos or controversy that was sparked after Pochettino's press conference today. So I'm going to read through his his quotes in context because I think that's fair because a lot of these things I think get sparked under, you know, people misunderstanding and reading like bits of a quote and then not reading it full in context. Um, Reese James is back. Obviously, I'll give you my predicted 11. Before we get into that, just want to shout out the fact that I'm going to be doing my watch along for the game tomorrow night and you can join for free, but you need to sign up to TIFO, brilliant new platform where I'm doing my watch alongs. I know some of you have already joined the community. Link in the description box below. Just use my referral code CFC and you can sign up, become a member of Son of Chelsea and join me for tomorrow night's game against Nottingham Forest. So make sure you do so and join the TIFO community because just because it's the end of the season, we're still going to be doing some watch alongs over the course of the summer. I'll probably be doing one for the Champions League final. We're going to be doing some across the Euro. So really excited about that so it would mean a lot if you could go down and become a member at TIFO on Son of Chelsea. So let's have a look at Pochettino's press conference uh, that was mainly positive mainly in terms of the injury point of view. I mean we know Reese James is at least back in training. Poch was kind of like he could be involved tomorrow. I think there is some discourse over do we actually want Reese involved at all for the rest of the season. I think it is a valid argument to say no because I think the fear of him getting another setback but then there also is a reality because of a bigger squad and, and Gareth Southgate is going to realise that Reese is back in, in training now. Is he going to take him to the Euros? And, and is he banking on maybe getting him back fit for the second half of the Euros if England progress? So I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But I, I think there is room for caution over Reese James. But it's just very nice to see him at least back training or back to a place where he could play some minutes. But I still think we're mainly now focusing on pre-season, getting him ready for the start of next season, unfortunately. But what really, I think, sparked hit interest and headlines, I think, from this press conference was what Pochettino had to say about whether he's going to be here next season. Before we... Let's actually just... We'll read through the quotes in context because I, I got sent these quotes in context because there's been a lot of outrage about it. And was Poch out of order for saying what he said? What does it mean? Does it mean the end of the world? I mean, usual hyperbole on, on Twitter, on X, right? So let, let's go for it. So the question was, can we expect you to be here next season? This is what Pochettino had to say about his Chelsea future. He said, look, it's not important. The most important thing is to keep going, working if we are all happy. Not only the owners happy with us or the sporting directors of us or us, with all the organisation that the club is building here because of them, we are all under assessment. If we are happy, perfect. But it is not only if the owners are happy or the sporting directors are happy. If we are happy, you need to ask us also because maybe we are not happy and we accept the situation and then we are not happy and we need to split. It is not going to be the first time the coaching staff at the end of the season decide to not keep going but at this end it is always the opposite way it is always the owners or the sporting directors they can say tomorrow maybe I can say I want to leave it is two parties to make a decision because Chelsea is not happy the owners or the sporting directors maybe we are not happy because we arrive here with a job to do and in the end it has not happened what we expect maybe we are not happy I'm not saying I am not happy but it is always one side and maybe we need to look at the other side so, you know, Poch at the time can speak in kind of broken English. So I, I think sometimes it is kind of sometimes hard to interpret, you know, exactly what he means. Is there more kind of meaning behind what he's saying? I actually think in context, in full context, for me, he's just laying out what we already know. I, there is this hypocrisy, right, of us speaking about a coach's um, future in public, us discussing it regularly as Chelsea fans, the media discussing it, um, you know, it just, it just being in kind of the, the not just, you know, behind closed doors. We talk about it. It's in public. Is Pochettino going to be here or not this season? 
And then the moment the guy at the center of it speaks about the potential of him not being here the next season when he's asked about it and he gives an honest answer, suddenly it's out of order. Suddenly, how dare you speak in public? How, you know, this is going to completely destabilize us. I'm like, I just find, first, I just find it a little bit hypocritical because for months, people, some people have been shouting from the, the rooftops that Pochettino should be sacked. At times, I have felt that I'm not going to lose much sleep if he's sacked. But then you can't turn around when he speaks honestly, A, about leaving, and then go, oh, this is out of order. And also B, unless you have been living under a rock, unless you pay no attention to the contract that Mauricio Pochettino was handed and the length of it that was handed to him last summer, how can you be shocked? Because when you hand a coach an 18-month contract, guys, we've been speaking about this for months, when you hand him an 18-month contract, the 12-month point is, is usually, it's kind of accepted in football, that that's when you make a decision. This was known 12 months ago that you were going to either extend the head coach or you're going to change the head coach. That is the reality. I really don't understand the bedwetting that goes on. And it, it does feel a little bit rich whenever I hear people, you know, I, I want more, you know, communication from the hierarchy at Chelsea. I, I like when people are a little bit more honest in public. But there is a reality that some people do not want honesty. And it's, it's abundantly clear when I see reactions like this. I also do think there are some kind of bad actors within this who will chop up, especially major, major journalists with major, major accounts who chop up quotes um, try and combine them together. I've read you it full in context. I will leave a link in the description box below for you to read every word he said in that press conference to get the full context. I don't see what he said that was bang out of order. I, I really don't. And it's just making a mountain out of a molehill and just, you know, acting shocked that A, things we've been talking about as fans for ages has been set out in the open or you, you've heard something honest from a from a coach. He, he, he's basically saying that, it's not just their decision. It's also my decision. How is that out of order? What is he not allowed to maybe walk away from his contract? I mean, it, this is just, again, it's just like very basic things that I just find social media like loses their minds about. I mean, it really shouldn't be that way. And I just think Poch, whether he's here or not, we don't know yet. I do think it's a 50-50 thing, but I'm not like losing my head about it because I think it's been just a reality. It is what it is, right? And if you think that Pochettino should be leaving at the end of the season, you cannot get outraged about this. You just can't because if you've been something wanting him out, you'd actually be quite happy listening to this, right? So usual Twitter nonsense around Chelsea Football Club, but uh, sorry for that kind of mini rant, guys, but it's just, it's just stuff again like that that just like baffles me because... It's so evident and it's so obvious and it's just kind of common knowledge. And it's like, if we want honesty, if we want transparency, if we also just talk about Chelsea, if you're someone that talks about Chelsea, especially if you have kind of a public facing account, if you talk about Chelsea on a regular basis and you talk about these kind of issues, I, I think it's just a little bit hypocritical for you to turn around and go, how dare the, the coach speak about this in public when we do every single day. So Reese James is back. Uh, let's get onto that front. So Reese James is back. So I, I think that whether we see him or not, I, I think it's up to you guys, right? Would you want to see him tomorrow? I, I'm, I'm much more leaning on let's be as cautious as possible with this guy. But he's going to have to play football at some point. We can't, you know, wrap him in cotton wool for, for months and months and months and, and never play him again. It's like the Kante situation, right? At some point, he is going to have to get out there and face the music because, you know, Chelsea are paying him a lot of money and he is a very big player for us. So he needs to get fit at some point. So let's hope um, it, it's managed correctly. Let's get into my starting 11 here. So I, I think Forest are an interesting team. They obviously possess some very good individual players. I think Morgan Gibbs-White is obviously a threat. I think the combination he has with Chris Wood has proven to be good. I, I saw their performance quite recently against um, Man City. And I thought in the first half, they created some very good looks at goal. It's just that execution that's lacking. And I do think this is a threat because Chelsea have, uh, are in a position where they could be complacent because not only are they expected to win this game against an opponent in the relegation zone but they've been getting a lot of praise and I hope it doesn't act as a, a sense of complacency because that's kind of jeopardy and drama and frustration that was there post Arsenal isn't there now that mood music going into this game is very different now so I hope it doesn't become a sense of complacency because this could be a game that goes wrong I mean the, the city ground it, it being in a hostile a loud ground I'm sure they want to back their team the players have to rise to that. They have to get beyond that and they have to show the levels of performance we have seen in recent weeks. So my team is going to be basically identical to what we saw on Sunday. I mean, I don't, unless there is a late injury, I don't see the point of changing it that radically, in my opinion. Um, unless Pochettino sees something profile-wise that he feels he needs to get into this team compared to last week, 
But, you know, West Ham are a physical team. So I think the team he picked last week done very, very well. I would pick this team again. So Petrovic in goal. Let's hope he can keep a, what would have been our third successive clean sheet, especially away from home where we haven't been able to keep clean sheets in a while. Chalabar has been, I'm not going to say a revelation because I knew how good he was, but just in terms of the story of this season, him becoming an integral player again, I think is wonderful to see. And especially offensively, if he's playing passes like that to Noni. If he can keep doing that, transformative and obviously defensively he's been a massive part of how Chelsea have looked a lot better in the, the ground he covers the decisions he makes I think as a defender he's just a very good addition especially in a back three Thiago Silva has uh, brilliantly found some form again near the end of his Chelsea career Ben Wabaliashil too I think has suddenly found form in this back three as well Marco Correa I mean calling for Marco Correa to start you know if you would have told me that at the start of the year, if you would have told me that, you know, a few months ago, even a few weeks ago, I probably wouldn't have agreed with you or would have laughed you out of the room. But that that is where we are. And I think that Kukurea, um is clearly filling a role for Pochettino at the moment. I don't think it's the be all and end all. I spoke about this on, on the show recently where, you know, I, I think that Lavia, Enzo Fernandez, you know, uh, Ugo Chukwu, you know, players like this, I, I still think will play a role in uh, over Kukurea in the future. And of course, if Malo Gusto can return soon, maybe he's taking that role as well. But hopefully he continues to play well because it clearly suits him a lot more. Gallagher obviously has contributed massively in recent games. He continues to play. I want to see him making those late runs into the box against this Forest defence, who not only are weak at set pieces, but I think also if you look at some of their recent goals, you get a third man runner, you get quite basic things, a lot of movement. That that defence and midfield aren't quite cohesive enough to deal with that. I think Chelsea can exploit them there. And Moises Caicedo has found the best form of his Chelsea career so far. Better late than never, uh, but really nice to see that Caicedo is, is performing to the level we hoped he would when we signed him last summer. And then uh, Noni Manawake, obviously defensively, I think has made real, real steps forward. And I think that obviously Pochettino has spoken about this. He's going to have to do similar if he starts again, because I think Callum, Callum Martin is going to make a big difference, especially down the left. He's a real threat, successful dribbles. He's top for Nottingham Forest this season and uh, will be coming off the back of a very confident performance against, obviously, uh, who was it? Sheffield United, where he scored two goals last week in their win. So he can be a threat and, and maybe pose more to him as a wing back than other teams have in recent weeks when we shifted to that formation. Mudrick, too, I think will start again on the left wing. Um, he still fades for me far too fast in games. And I think there is still a conversation about his ability just technically. But, you know, I think... Poch will stick with what has worked and will continue to play Mudrick. Um, and I think obviously Cole Palmer, the man in the moment, one player, Premier League player of the month, is uh, up for both Premier League awards of the year, has been sensational. Let's hope he ends this week with even more goals for Chelsea. And so to Nicholas Jackson, who with 16 goals in all comps, can see 20 on the horizon. I mean, if he, I know it's a, it's a stretch. It basically means him at least having one or two really, really good games in front of goal. But you look at the the opposition that Chelsea have, I mean, and you look at the goals he has scored, and if Chelsea can be as creative and unselfish, there could be some tappings in there for, for Nico for the last week of the season. So let's hope he can increase his, his goal tally before we do end things for this season. So that is my team. Let me know yours in the comments below, and I will see you again very soon. All the best. Join that watch along. Join that watch along. Link down below. Up the Chelsea.